confidence monitor is not on. Welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. I'm Jessie Laughlin, and I serve as the Director of Lifespan Religious Education here at this church. This is a beloved community striving to live its mission of embracing freedom, loving wholeheartedly, growing in mind, body, and spirit, and adding to the healing of the world. We are unapologetically progressive in welcoming people of all ethnicities, races, sexual orientations, and gender identities, the so and social and economic situations and abilities. We advocate for human rights, and we are good stewards of our world. In living our mission, we recognize the network of relationships of which we are a part. This is the ancestral home of the Peoria people. They and other nations were here long before the first European settlers came down the Illinois River. We honor the Peoria people for who they were then and for who they are now. Thank you for joining us here in person or on Zoom. One of the lessons from the past few years is how precious it is to come together, to be with other people, to expand our circles of care and kindness. So please stay and have some sweets in Fellowship Hall or visit in the Zoom room after service. For now, take a moment to turn your device to worship mode. That would be silent or vibrate. The slide can help you find those buttons, or if you need help, ask a neighbor. As we find ourselves in the midst of the winter holiday season, I'm grateful that we have a time to be together in a bit of a pause. There's lots of other opportunities for us to connect, so make sure you take a look in your bulletin or on the board in the foyer or in your Friday email for other ways. We currently have signups on our table in the foyer for MLK Luncheon and the Peoria Pride Gala, if you'd like to sit at the UUCP table. Um, I also want to make, sure, make sure you all know you're invited back this evening for lessons and carols. It'll be our traditional candlelit service. And uh, finally, after coffee hour, if anybody is so inspired to stay and help tidy up, we welcome all helping hands this holiday. For our opening words today, we have one of my favorite selections. For So the Children Come by Sophia Lyon Foz. For so the children come, and so they have been coming. Always in the same way they come, born of the seed of humanity. No angels herald their beginnings. No prophets predict their future courses. No wise men see a star to show where to find the babe that will save all humankind. Yet, each night a child is born is a holy night. Parents and caregivers sitting beside their children's cribs feel glory in the sight of new life beginning. They ask where and how will this new life end? Or will it ever end? Each night a child is born is a holy night. A time for singing, a time for wondering, a time for worshiping. I invite Michaela Thomas up to light the chalice. Good morning. 
we gather we gather together on this Christmas Eve as a fellow soldier, looking for light, for hope, for peace, for love. We gather as people from many backgrounds, many faiths, many cultures, and many spiritual paths. But as we light this chalice, we gather as one body looking for the for the nativity, for messages to all humanity. Its message is that there is light, there is hope, there is peace, there is love. So why? Do we celebrate Christmas Eve? As Unitarian Universalists, most of us believe that Jesus was a human being, that he was a spiritual teacher and a compelling social revolutionary. Most of us don't believe Jesus was a divine savior sent to redeem us from our sins. And if Jesus was a son of God, many believe he was so only in the way that each of us is a child of the holy. So why do we celebrate Christmas Eve? Now, some of us do celebrate the story of the only Son of God come to save the world. That belief is welcome here as well. For others, the culture in which we live tells this story over and over, and so it has become part of our consciousness, if not our belief. So we gather here to experience it once again. But it's not only the Christian religion that tells this story over and over. We, as a Unitarian, Universalist, people of faith, need this story too. Because, like all great religious myths that have been told through the ages, this night and this story hold essential spiritual truth. As Ernest H. Summerfield wrote, we believe that some stories deserve to live forever because of what they tell us about ourselves and our world. The angels singing an anthem of peace and goodwill deserve to be heard forever because they are the angels in our human hearts. The humble shepherds who have ears to hear and hearts to receive the message of joy deserve to live through time. For they remind us of our responsibility to make this world a better place. The three wise people, so faithfully seeking the way of a star, they deserve to search again and again. As long as the years shall be, for they are the story of the quest for what is best in ourselves, in one another, in this broken and beautiful world. This is the story that we are going to tell once more. So let us enter the story together, and we can all rise and sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's hymn number 225 in your hymnal.
Please be seated. So this is a public service announcement. There are still a few parts that we need to fill out, and I am the person who is trying to recruit the people to fill the parts. So we still need a Mary, maybe a Joseph. You know, that's ambiguous. So we need a Mary, a Joseph, and a couple of drummers, and maybe a couple of wise people. We have crowns and tiaras, so anybody can be a wise person. So if you'd like to one of those parts, come see me in the back. Thank you. We're going to tell a story that you may have heard before. It's a story about a baby born a long time ago. But it could be a story about a baby being born this very moment. A long, long, long time ago, in a city far, far away from here, there lived an emperor named Caesar Augustus. He ruled over almost the entire world. One day, the emperor called together his advisors and said, I need more money to fund my armies. Send out soldiers to all the lands. They must tell the people that no matter where they are now, they must journey back to the town where they were born. And everyone must sign their name in a big book and then pay me a tax. In one of those places, a place called Galilee, there were two teenagers named Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph were young. They loved each other. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And Mary was about to have a baby. Mary and Joseph had to travel a long, long time for many, many days, and they were so very, very tired. They wanted to rest and sleep. When they got to Bethlehem, they tried to find a room to rent for the night, but every place had a sign out front that said no vacancy. There was no room for them anywhere, but everyone turned away from them and said, you are not welcome here. Joseph was scared that they'd have no place to sleep. Finally, one innkeeper said, uh, I'll let you... I'll let you sleep in my old stable out back, but you need to know it's old and not very clean. I mean, I keep my animals there, the donkey, the cows, the, the, uh, the goats, um, so it smells kind of bad, but you'll be safe for the night. You're welcome. All right, for those of you in the sanctuary, it's time to take out your paper bag. Mary and Joseph, we invite you to stay in our stable, the red chairs. <laughs> Little rustling here. So in your paper bag, we're going to take out our heart sticker. In our story, no one had any room. Their hearts were closed. And then one person, the innkeeper, he decided to help. They didn't do it perfectly, but they did find a way to make a difference and make some room. This is a story about making room for anyone who needs to be cared for. Hold the sticker in front of your own heart and repeat these words after me. 
May this heart help me remember that I am like the innkeeper. May this heart help me remember I can open my heart to others. Now I invite you to find somebody to give your heart to, and they might give you theirs. And so it was that while they were in the stable, Mary gave birth to her son. She wrapped him in a clean cloth and laid him in the manger. Let's all welcome baby Jesus into the world by singing happy birthday to him. Later that night, both Mary and Joseph felt cold, but there was no warm clothes for anyone in the stable. Joseph didn't know what to do. Would his family shiver all through that long, cold night? When people don't have enough money because they don't get paid enough, even though they work very hard, or there aren't enough jobs, or for some other reasons. When we do not have enough money for the very important basics of life, like food, clothing, and shelter, we worried and were scared. But sometimes, some of us have enough, or even a little extra, and so we decide to share with those who do not. This is how we take care of each other and express our love. Today, you may have brought a donation for our mitten tree, a warm winter accessory that can be donated to the kids just down the road at Pleasant Valley Middle School. Another way to contribute today to the, is to contribute to the collective gifts that make it possible for us to be here. The offerings of service, of care, and of money that of the past lead a direct line into our lives here. So whether this is your first Sunday visiting or if you've been here for decades and generations, we receive those gifts and contribute our own for our own sake, for that of our children and for those who have yet to come. We, what we gather together is passed forward to those that we will never meet. One of our practices here at UUCP is sharing the plate. Part of the undesignated funds collected during worship go to a local community group that's serving in our area. So for the month of December, the benefactor is the Peoria chapter of NAACP. Founded in 1915, the Peoria branch of the NAACP works for equity and justice in all aspects of life, voting, education, housing, and employment. Two thirds of our undesignated collection goes to the church and one third to Peoria chapter of NAACP. Please use the envelope in your order of worship to designate a different use. Or you can see the QR code in our order of service and if you're online, there's a link in the chat. As we prepare to share these gifts, our three drummers, our drummers, if we have some, may come forward. <laughs> they remind us that from you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. The ushers will now pass the collection plates. And if you have a mitten tree donation, you may add that as well. The mitten tree will stay up in fellowship hall through the month of December. 
So drummer, drum roll, please. Now, in this story and in the same country, there were shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Their flock were made of sheep and cows and goats, and the shepherds took care of them. They kept them together so that they didn't get lost. If one did wander away and get lost, a shepherd would always go and find it. It was very, very dark out in the field and very cold and sometimes very dangerous. Shepherds are people who care for other living things. In our story tonight, the shepherds and their dog care for the sheep in the fields. But each one of us is like a shepherd. We need to take great care of each other and make sure that the smallest of us are watched over. We help each other and make, every, and make sure everyone is taken care of and part of a loving community. We make sure that no one is ignored and especially that no one is picked on. We help keep each other and everyone safe. It's time for your bag again. So this time we're going to reach inside and take out our cotton ball. Hold your cotton ball in your hand. And in this story, our shepherds and their pterodactyl stay close to their flock. Sometimes they use a gentle hand to guide them, sometimes to feel the softness of their wool. Hold the cotton ball in front of your heart and repeat these words after me. May this softness help me remember. I am like a shepherd. May this softness help me remember that I need to care for others. So in a moment, I want you to take your cotton ball and give it to someone who's not part of your family, someone who you didn't come with today. We do this to symbolize the caring we share with one another in our church community and in the world. We do this to symbolize all the ways we want to be able to find one another and the ways we want to be found. Here we go. joys and concerns, the sorrows, the milestones, that which lives within our hearts. 
So in a moment, I will light the candles at the tables in the front, and you are invited to come forward and light one as a physical representation of what is in your mind and with you. If you are viewing at home, we encourage you to light a candle that is with you, or one virtually, or take the spirit of the light that is lit here as yours as well. Let us begin. From the 20th century Unitarian Order, 
and author A. Powell Davies. What are we, any of us but strangers and sojourners, forlornly wandering through the nighttime until we draw together and find the meaning of our lives with one another, dissolving our fears in each other's courage, making music together and lighting torches and guiding us through the dark? This is the time when we extend our circle of care and show the joys and sorrows of the congregation. We offer care to Carol Lowe, longtime member who's not able to attend with us in person. She has a number of health concerns and it's just a little harder right now. Let us extend our love to her. We send wishes for health to Mary Mahalan Kafar's wife, Marsha. Marsha continues to be ill and is at this point in the hospital as well. We offer condolences to Nancy Venzon on the recent death of her sister. We offer our care and support to Kathy McNeil as she is part of taking care of family affairs following the recent death of her father, Jean Martin. The congregation is welcome to attend Jean's celebration of life at Wright and Salmon's Mortuary in Peoria on Saturday. You we'll see the announcements for the details. And lastly, we offer wishes for safe journeys and travels and returns to all who are visiting and wandering in this holiday season. Let us hold one more moment for all the joys and sorrows, names and milestones that are with us and remain unspoken. Amen, shalom, and salam. And now, in feeling in the softness of the care and the circle that we have created, please rise in body or spirit and join us in singing the verses of hymn number 237, The First Noel.
Now, in this story, and in the same country where there were shepherds living out in the fields, behold, an angel stood before them, and the glory of spirit shone all around. The angel said to them, joy for all people for a baby is born in the city of Bethlehem and this will be the sign to you you will find an ordinary baby sleeping in a manger he's so poor he's sleeping out with the animals but there is great love inside this baby just as there is great love inside each of you this baby will grow up and try to show us how to live in peace and how to love each other he will show us how each how we each can be saviors for this world and suddenly the sky was filled with angels singing beautiful songs and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill among all people. Time for our bags again. We're going to reach inside and take out the sparkliest, touchiest thing. You all have a halo, and I invite you to put your halo on your head. And so, with our hearts full and open, we repeat after me and say, may this halo help me remember that I am surrounded by love. And may this halo help me remember that I am love and that we become part of the angel song. Now you may stay seated and we'll sing along to hymn number 231, Angels We Have Heard on High. Remain seated and comfortable. We're going to sing verses 1 and 3. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, wise people from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is he who has been born? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to pay homage. These three wise people came from a faraway land, a land that was probably Iran or Iraq. They had seen a bright star in the sky and had followed it to the stable. We followed the star, they said, because we knew it would lead to a place where all people would be treated kindly. 
no matter what land they came from, no matter what they believe, no matter what color (laughs) their skin might be, no matter what religion they practice, no matter who they love, and no matter how they create a family. That kind of place, those kinds of people are what we have come to find. There's another goodie in your bag for you. This time we're going to take out our star sticker. Hold your star in front of your heart. And with your star held where your feeling and your thoughts meet, we repeat these words. May this star remind me of the brightness and wisdom that is with me wherever I go. Take your star and place it somewhere on your clothing. And may it remind ourselves of the wisdom and insight that each of us have and we can share with one another. Stay seated while we sing along to We Three Kings. We'll sing hymn 259, verses 1 and 4. You can have this page. The wise ones brought with them gifts, traditional gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Once the three wise ones had offered their gifts, there was a loud scurrying sound. Animals, all creatures, great and small, drawn by the bright star and all of the visitors who were coming, wanted to see the little baby sleeping in the manger. All living creatures share our earth home with us and are part of our earth family. So as we prepare to sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem, I invite anyone who would like to be an animal in our stable to come forward. We have donkey costumes and various other masks if you'd like. We will again remain seated and have a nice sing-along to O Little Town of Bethlehem, hymn number 246, and we'll sing verses 1 and 2.
And that is what happened on the first Christmas Eve. Jesus was born into the world. A loving family surrounded him. Friends gathered to celebrate him. And others came as well because they believed there was so much goodness inside all people. And this is the belief we hold right now in this moment. The blessing of each of our births. Ears to hear music. Eyes to behold light. Hands to build true peace on earth and to hold each other in love. A baby named Jesus was in a place where love was the most important gift of all. And we gather in and live in that place too. This is the end of one story and the beginning of another and another and another. Please take the final item out of your bag. Be a small candle. And rise and body your spirit as you are able. We'll sing through all three verses of our final hymn tonight, this morning, <laughs> 251, Silent Night. Go ahead and light your flame. Well, I thank you all for playing along with me today. I enjoyed this way of telling the story, and I like how each of us was able to become a part. Now we send our light out into the world. We extinguish this flame, but we keep its light in our heart with its message of love and justice, taking it outside of these walls to the world we live in until we are together again.
During Advent, we sang, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God is with us. And look around you, for God has come. The sacred is with us, is in each other. And with us in the spaces between, in the memories we share, in this holy moment, in the future we build together. The sacred is with us in the empire of the spirit that we create together. It is born in all our loving relationships with family, with partners, with friends, with each other. Look around you in this moment, in this morning, in this day of Christmas Eve. Look around you at the many faces of love illuminated by light and light. Look around you, Emmanuel. Emmanuel has come. May you go in peace. May you go in hope. May you go in joy. May you go in love on this Christmas Eve. And may you always carry this light with you. Our worship is ended. Let our service begin. <laughs>